I'm happy to see you guys. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that today. Okay, so I'm gonna set this one aside and I'll show you an example of one that I finished a little while ago. This is one that I made earlier this morning with some scraps from the World is My Playground kit. So this says chomp means I love you an alligator. I think this one would be a fun little gift. I found a couple of little uh, gecko um, eyelets that I had. They're not alligators, but nobody's gonna care. <laughs> I guarantee it. So just a fun little, fun little project. So first I'll show you what I start with. I am able to find these little notebooks. They're, um, I can usually find them either at the Dollar Tree, uh, Dollar General, or at um, Staples. So if I get really desperate, I'll order them off of Staples. Um, they are a little bit more there. Often I'll end up paying more like $2 a piece or something like that. Um, it really doesn't matter what they look like. So because um, you're gonna cover up the whole front of it anyway. And if it really is a concern for you, you could cover up the back as well. I honestly just cover up the front, okay? So the paper that we're gonna be working with today is leftovers from a class I designed recently. We are gonna use the scraps today from this layout to create a notebook, and it will be a drawing item in my class. So. All right, so here's the notebook that we're gonna start with. And I pulled out the scraps that I have left from creating that layout class. So literally, this is what I've got. These are all just some two-sided papers. The first step in creating one of these notebook covers is sizing your paper for the cover, okay? So I am going to do that first and poke in here. Right. So to do make the cover, I just poke, um, pop my paper underneath and try to line it up along this bottom edge and just do a quick pencil trace. And I am a big fan of simple strategies for things. I could definitely get out my trimmer and cut that, but um, I don't know. I, I think that's why Kiwi Lane speaks to me so much um, because I can do so much with, uh, with paper, pencil, scissors, and some ink uh, in my templates. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this by hand. I don't need my trimmer. It's only gonna take me a second. So I chose this paper because it's kind of neutral, but I like the design in the background. Um, it's just got kind of a gold, um, I guess it's a hexagon. It's just kind of stretched out. Um, all right, so I would just check this, make sure it's gonna fit on there pretty well. And I think that's gonna be good. At this point, I tend to set my notebook aside because I'm not gonna need it again until the end. So there's my cover. And then I get busy figuring out what I wanna do. Now, I figured you guys were probably gonna fall in love with this one that Susan made me. So I'm gonna show you guys how to create this look um, today, and that's gonna be our inspiration, okay? So I had one sentiment left after doing that layout and it says do more of what makes you happy and that is good advice for all of us so i'm gonna go ahead and use this this is lacy trims one i love this template i actually use it quite a bit so it just fits on here it's really really close but we're gonna make it work so just gonna trace that. And set that aside. Do a quick trim around here. If you guys are watching these videos, then you probably already know to cut towards the back of your scissors and 
move your paper and your scissors to help you get smoother cuts. But you also know that ink is the great forgiveness. So if you are getting some uh, flat edges when you're cutting or something like that, don't freak out. Just do a quick ink around the edge. It hides any imperfections, hides any pencil marks, makes everything look nice. So I tend to ink as I go um, with projects like this. So I'm not gonna be making that many pieces. So I'll go ahead and ink the cover real quick so that that's done as well. And then we'll move on to the next step. All right. So I've got those two pieces done and I decided that I want to use this really beautiful patterned paper for this. So this is going to be my next step and I'm going to figure out how much of this, it looks like I'm going to need about half of the lacy trims. So I'm not going to even worry about cutting the whole thing. I'm just going to cut the part that I'm going to need. Okay. So when I look at this paper, it is likely that I'm going to want to use this big piece for something else. So I'm going to trace this over here. And I know that this is going to get tucked underneath, so I'm not going to be too worried about that edge being rough. I'm just going to trace around, get that center out, and pop that aside. So I'm going to ink, finish inking this. Try to remember to kind of flick along the edge when you're inking. If you drag, along the edge you're going to destroy your daubers really fast they're not super expensive but eventually that starts to add up all right okay so on your borders you've got these measurements that really help you when you're designing on something that's not 12 inches so i grabbed paisley place because it's narrow enough for this project um and won't overtake it um, and it's one of my favorite borders so it's always funny when people ask me what my favorite is it's I'm I, I am not shy about Paisley being one of my favorites so kind of thinking about this look here I know that I even though this is a, a narrower border I know that I don't want it to come out quite that far so I'm not going to end up cutting them as tall um, as they are. Does that make sense? So I'm going to have this here. I want a curvy border on this side. And I think I'm going to go to this end. Eh, maybe not. Okay, curvy border on that side. And then I'm gonna want a curvy border on this side. So I'm gonna make these a little shallower than what they show. So I had already made up my mind that I wanted to use this um, marble paper. Oh. Yeah, I think I'll still go with the marble. Um, this marble paper. So this is what I'm gonna do. I know my notebook is about seven inches tall. So I am going to just trace up to that seven inch mark on here. But I'm positioning my border off of the paper a little bit so that I end up with a much narrower cut. So I hope that makes sense. Sometimes I think I'm clear when I'm improvising things and then I find out that maybe I'm not. <laughs> All right, so I am gonna just trim along here real quick. And again, guys, if you are not perfect, I always have people that are anxious about cutting when I introduce them to Kiwi Lane. They're like, oh, I made a mistake. Or 
there is no mistake in crafting and if you do not get it quite perfect it is not a big deal all right so again here's me and my logic right i don't want to get out my trimmer i'm just going to line this up and cut along that edge so and i know that's not showing up a lot yet but it will we're going to ink it i'm going to be putting a border along it um, to seal the seams between this and the other piece i think there'll be plenty plenty going on if not we can swap it out for something else but I'm not going to ink this straight edge because I already know I'm going to cover it up. Okay. For the other side, I want to use some of this stripe. I thought this striped paper was super fun. So same. Let's see. I know I've got seven inches to work with. Oh, good. I have enough here. So I knew I wanted the stripe to go a certain direction. And I know I don't want it to be as tall, so I'm going to back that off again. Okay, come down here to the bottom. And I am going up to the seven inch mark. Okay. Let me do a quick trim. Okay, all righty. I'm going to measure that out. All right. With all these scraps hanging on here, this one's a little bit awkward. So I will draw a line this time, trim it that way. All right. So now I've got this fun stripe. Again, I'm going to ink and I'm not going to ink that straight edge because I want to pull in a little bit of um, gold for a for a little border on here. All right, so let's just take a look at this. So we've got this piece here. I'm set aside my borders. Got this piece here. With this one, I can decide either to tuck them all the way under or I can go over. And I think I'm gonna go over that first layer and do it that way, okay? And then I still need to scooch this a little bit. And I'll trim that up, but I just wanna kind of get a picture here. And then this is gonna go over the top. And then I'm gonna do a little strip here. So I had these little gold, little gold pad it's so funny you know people you, you get things at crops and different things and sometimes you wonder what you're gonna do with it and then all of a sudden you have a great idea so this is two inches wide I only want a half inch so I'm gonna do a little half inch strip it's not long enough it doesn't matter because we're not gonna see the whole thing anyway so I'm just gonna cut it in the middle See, because we're just going to tuck it. Does that make sense? And we'll play with all these measurements as we, when we put together the final version. But I don't know how much the ink is showing up on here, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I've got a piece for the top and a piece for the bottom. And I just wanted to pull a little bit more of that gold in since there's um, gold on that background paper and a little bit of gold in the circle okay so we are almost ready to put this together there's one thing left okay when i got mine from susan one of the things that i really loved about it was this fiber that's on here okay just a really thin thread um maybe it's an embroidery thread i don't know but I, um, I love the look of that. And so when I create these um, notebooks this way, I tend to duplicate that. So I'll show you guys how to do that real quick. All you need is a thin fiber of some kind. This one happens to have just a little bit of shimmer in it, 
which I really like. And then you figure out where you're gonna start it. I already know that this for sure is tucking under. Um, so I am going to start about here. You flip it over and just secure it on the back with just a regular piece of scotch tape. Okay. And then you start wrapping. So you are wrapping over and then when you come back, you meet in that same spot in the bottom and then you're wrapping to the other side of the bump. Okay. And then you're coming into the middle on the bottom. Match back up there and you just keep going. So I'm just gonna do this. Hopefully you can see it. I know we all find ways to figure this stuff out, but sometimes it's fun to see it. When I first got that, I was like, oh, gotta make this. And then I had to play with it a little bit and figure out how. So. If you haven't done this yet, hopefully this will give you a little tutorial. I'm just gonna keep going, just around and around. And by here, I know I'm good um, because of the amount of tucking that I'm doing. So I'm just gonna flip that, do a quick trim, try not to let it go while I get some tape. Again, it's just scotch tape, nothing special. Okay, Ooh, look, I had just enough. You guys gotta, you gotta appreciate this amount of scrap. <laughs> so I'm gonna push that off to the side. And then we are going to do some building. All right, so the piece that is kind of a definite placement is this string. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with it. And I know that this is going to end up tucking under it. So I wanna just check my spacing on that, okay? So right away I can see I need to do a little bit of trimming here. So that works out. Go ahead and cut off those pieces. I'll test that again. And that looks like it's gonna be fine. So one of my tips on this would be to double it here. I think I just grabbed an empty tape on there. So what I mean is I do use a regular adhesive, but because this is something that is going to be on someone's desk, it's, it might be in their purse, it could be thrown in a backpack. Um, I have one at school, I take to all of my staff meetings. You want it to hold up. So I would use a nice high quality liquid adhesive in addition to um, a, a double-sided adhesive, just to give you that extra adhesion, okay, and I am going to kind of center this and just gently push it down for now, okay. Um, not a big deal that it um, is not going to be stuck all the way. All right, Oop. guess what I just realized? I was gonna tuck this one under it. So let me get it ready real quick. No way is that stuck down yet, right? That's what we're gonna say. No way. And I'm just gonna border this with some liquid glue. All right. I tend to take these when I'm done creating them and I will stick them underneath something heavy, like a completed album for a while, just to make sure that they, um, stick really well and are, are extra, extra sturdy. I'm gonna scooch this one out a ways. Let's go about there. Sorry that I messed up that step for you guys. I guess you're not making it with me, so you can fix it when you do it yourself. All right, and then I'm gonna take this striped piece 
and adhere. Right, I'm going to put this one down. Okay. And remember, we did these gold strips. These, I'm just going to put the adhesive on. It's funny, I'm going to leave my adhesive laying down so I quit having to wait for it. Okay, so this is just going to be that little pop of gold. I'll do one from the top. so and this is they get to be a little bit bulky with the stuff that we're adding so that um, extra little bit of time under something heavy is really helpful all right and then this you can kind of decide how you want it set depending on how much maybe of the stripe you want to see and that kind of thing so I am going to kick this back just a little bit because I really love um, the threading on it and I don't want to cover up all of that. So again, I'm going to do a combination of double-sided adhesive and wet adhesive just to make sure this thing is got all it needs to stay sturdy. Okay, give that a little push. And then probably the last thing I want to do is add something cutesy um, here at the top and at the bottom. So I always like to use maybe a brad. So I might do something like that. That might be a little bit too much. There's already a lot going on on this. I could do a little flower. I kind of like the flower. I also pulled just a circle. I don't know. I think I'm gonna do the flower. So I am just using a, it's called a silent setter. I don't know. I've had it for, feels like a hundred years. Obviously it hasn't been that long, but I've had it a long time. It works really well. And for something like this, I would do more of um, a brad than um, an enamel dot or something. I know in my box, in my, um, excuse me, in my books and on my scrapbook pages, I'm a big fan of using enamel dots, jewel dots, things like that. Um, but on something like this, I'd be afraid that they would end up just popping off. So the brad's gonna give it that extra sturdiness. All right. So that cover is done. So I am going to go ahead and do adhesive on the back of this all the way around. Okay. And then a little bit more. And then again, I'm gonna double duty with wet adhesive around the edge. And just kind of randomly in the middle. Take this and just line it up. You've already measured your cover. You already cut it custom for this particular book. They are all a tiny bit different, so it does help to, to do it each time. Give it a push down. Find something heavy to put it under, and you've got a little notebook. So that style is one idea, and then I showed you the one that, I, um, that was given as a gift to me. And then the one that I made earlier this morning, um, going, you know, with the borders going the other direction and just using a little bracket, 
So lots of options, you guys. Play with them, um, just have some fun. That's what it's about, right? So I hope that you guys are all doing well and that everybody's staying healthy and taking care of themselves. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in and I will talk to you later.